Hey everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the trim window. This is based off a couple of episodes that we've just done, talking about ripple editing, rolling editing, talking about trimming in your timeline. Uh, but now we're going to be showing how to use the trim window, another tool, to kind of do the same things that we just shot, uh, showed you in the, in the previous episode, but in, a, in a, what I consider a much cooler way. So one way to access your trim window, and if I and I would recommend you go back and look at the ripple roll episode a couple episodes back just to kind of understand it. If you don't understand what it is, that, that will help you. But what, to access uh, the trim window, you're going to hit Shift-T, and Shift-T is going to jump to your closest edit point. Right now, the closest edit point is right here. So if I hit Shift-T, it jumps to that. It selects it. It has this red line, which means the both the both the clips out point to the left and the in point to the right, they have been selected. And up here you see two images. I'm going to tilt it over there so you can see a bigger window. You see the one frame. This is the ending frame, the out point to the left. This is the in point frame to the right. And right now with this window, you see a highlight that's around both these windows. That means both these clips edit points have been selected. And that's indicated by showing this little red line on both edits right there. Now, the, um, as opposed to doing this, if you move your mouse up here, you've got access to the roll edit right here on this on these two clips. If you move to the left, it turns to this yellow arrow to the right, and that's your ripple tool for the clip to the left. And, and, uh, and now if I move it over here, that's going to be a ripple point to the end point to the right, clip to the right. And you can select those edit points by doing this. If you move over and click, notice how that changed as a yellow marker kind of go, uh, wrapping around to the left. That means it's got a clip, uh, a hold on that clip's out point, and that's all it will change. It will not affect the adjacent clip. If I go over here, the opposite, now I've got this clip's uh, end point selected, and it's only going to change that clip's end point. And you got these little things up here. I don't ever really use these, and I'll tell you why in a second. But uh, this is going to help you trim this clips in point plus one it's going to add to it it's basically going to tr trim it to the right which is basically eating into it going further into it and you can see that shrinking there and it's doing a ripple edit one frame at a time but if you do it here to the left you'll notice it'll start minusing one frame off if you do this, this is minus five frames off at a time i hardly ever use this because i like to use the shortcuts and then if you select the roll edit it's going to do it to both clips that so will shrink one clips in point while extending this clips out point or vice versa so I like to use the ripple tool as a matching tool here. First of all, let's play through this clip here. Right there she's moving and she rolls over. I've kind of shown this in the previous episode, but now we're showing how to do it, do it again. And here she hasn't began rolling over yet, so that's a mismatch in continuity. So if I want to have it before she kind of starts moving and cut to that other shot here, what we can do is we can hit Shift T, it'll jump to that point right there, and I can move up here and the, let, let me hit tilt it on this so we see the full screen here. And I can grab this clip's uh, out point here and I can shrink it before she starts moving or I can extend it to the right dragging it to the right so what we want to do is we want to use the ripple tool to get that uh, this clips out point to may maybe where she just barely starts to move her head over uh, right there she starts to barely roll her head so I'm gonna stop it right there let go and then get the same clip right here and get this point to the same point here drag that over to where she, drag it over to the right till where she starts to move her head, maybe right there, barely starts to move her head, and that hopefully is going to be a match from this shot to this shot. In fact, you can even, without getting out of this, you can just simply press your space bar, and it will do a preview of it. It'll take it back a couple seconds and preview the, the whole edit. So let me hit the space bar, and now it does a preview edit. I think that matches okay, but now what's kind of cool is the roll tool, if we go back to Shift-T here, and we can move in the middle and use the roll tool. We use the ripple tool to match, and now we're going to use the roll edit to change where we want uh, the edit to happen. And I think we don't dwell on this clip long enough over here. The first one is kind of long, and then this one's really kind of a short edit. So I'm going to grab my roll tool, and I'm going to extend this over to the left. And look what's happening here now. You see both frames moving. You see this one moving. You see this one moving. If you use the ripple edit, notice it just edits that clip. Let me undo that. And if you do it the same to this clip with the, the, the ripple edit, it changes that clip. And notice how the other one to the left, the, the end point is staying the same. So now when you use the roll edit tool, it will move both clips simultaneously. And now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this clip over here a little bit. Just drag that to the left. And now we will dwell on this clip a little bit longer. So let's see how that looks. Preview it. Press play. The space bar. And I like the timing on that. So let's use this again. Later on down the timeline, she turns on the light, the door opens up, and it cuts back to her, and we're sitting there for a second, and then we start dollying into her. See, and that's way too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trim tool to kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to hit Shift-T. It'll jump to the closest uh, edit point, which is right there. Hit tilde over this so we can, so can see this a little bigger. 
I'm going to actually ripple edit this. I'm going to grab it and drag it to the right and get it right where the dolly just barely starts to move. Right there, let go, press play, and take a look at my preview. So I don't like that little head jitter there before it cuts to her, so I'm going to actually trim that even a little bit more. So move this and grab it right there where her head kind of settles. Perfect. Now let's play through there. Now we don't have that little head jitter and her head settling. And we get just kind of the look of panic on her face. So cool. Now another option you have with this trim window here is editing one frame at a time. Uh, rather than playing it through or grabbing this and, and, and doing this, if you just want to trim it like one frame at a time, say we're trying to get that point where her head just settles down perfectly and then we want to cut to it right on that frame. Uh, this is what we can do here. I, we can select, select that clip to the right here. It's already selected. You see that yellow line selecting it to the right, the edit to the right. It's got that clip's endpoint selected. Now the shortcuts are right here for trimming one set one frame at a time and the shortcut is option and the right arrow key. Um, if you use this one here, which is option shift, right arrow key, it'll do five frames at a time. We're just going to do one frame at a time right now. So I'm going to hold down option. It would be alt on a PC. And I'm going to arrow to the right. And you'll notice it is ripple editing this one frame at a time. See, I can push this in until her head kind of settles down right there. And now I can arrow left. Say, no, I want a little bit more or a little bit less or a little bit more left and right, right there. And that's, my, and th and that's where I want my edit. So that's a helpful little tool there to just edit one frame at a time if, if needs be. So as we play through that, let's play through that, the door opens, and I like the edit, I like the timing there. Oh, and we got a little bump there at the end. So let's, let's get that, or let's get rid of that. All right, one other option you have in the trim window is what is called dynamic trimming. This is a, a cool feature they added a few ba few years back. And honestly, th th this is true too. The famous editor, Walter Murch, was complaining to Adobe that Premiere Pro didn't have a dynamic trimming option inside of Premiere Pro. And they actually immediately changed that. So one kind of cool thing about Adobe is that if a lot of people complain about things, they will, they will oftentimes uh, make changes to it. So I'm going to hit Shift-T. Oops, and it went to the previous one. So actually, since it went to the previous one here and I want this edit here, I can just arrow down and boom, now that one is selected. It's a ripple edit to the right, but I want to do it to this one to the left and get rid of that little bump. So let's show dynamic trimming here. I've selected that. And what you can do is you can hit J, K, and L, and it will, J is rewind, K is stop, L is forward. If I do forward, L, it's going to extend this clip until I hit K and then it will perform the edit. Watch this. I'm going to hit L, it forwards, See, now it's too long, and K, and stop, and it just extended this and added that extra footage that I just played through. So if I want to get rid of footage, I'm going to hit J, because I want to get rid of this part right here where it jiggles at the end. Right there, that little dolly bumps something and does that little jiggle. So I want to go, I mean, I could do a quick, do a quick edit on this, but dynamic trimming is kind of nice because uh, so if you're playing through a clip and you're kind of just watching it intuitively, when you hit pause, you want your edit to be right there. Uh, that's that's what dynamic trimming does for you is just lets you play off of intuition and feel the edit rather than uh, tr try to just nub it one frame at a time to, to perfection. Uh, so let's uh, use a little bit more intuition. So I'm going to hit shift T on this edit here. I've already got this clip's uh, out point selected. Now I'm just going to hit J and it will rewind. Watch for the bump. Bump. K. Okay, stop. And it got rid of it. Good. Perfect. All right, so uh, let's use the, our dynamic trimming on one other edit here. Let's, I'm going to extend this door opening up here. Use a ripple edit. So it's a really long opening door, and then the door is just sitting there open for a little while, and then it cuts to her. So let's say I'm just going to try to feel where I want that edit to happen. I'm going to shrink this a little bit so it cuts a little prematurely while the door is opening. And let's say I just want to feel where the door, where, the, where it needs to cut from the door opening because I don't want to see it have to open up all the way. It starts opening up and once it starts opening up and she realizes it's opening up and nobody's there, then she starts freaking out. So I'm going to hit Shift T to jump to that edit point here. Uh, we're going to do a ripple edit to the left because I want to just extend the door footage and not her footage. So now I can hit... Let's tilt over this so we can see. And I'm going to hit L to play. I'm going to get ready to hit K where I want it to stop uh, as it plays. So L. Right about there. See, that's my kind of response is where once the door's opened up and from her perspective, I see, okay, the door's opening up. Could it be mom? Could it be dad? But nope, there's nobody there. So once I realize there's nobody there and the door just opened up by itself, then I want to cut to the panic. So see that JKL, that dynamic trimming really helped. Let's press play and watch this. 
See, and that pacing works really well. So, uh, so then when it cuts back, it'll cut back to the door already open. Let's do this one more time because the door opens and there's nobody there. See, now you want to, I want it when, barely when the foot starts maybe coming in. So once again, based off in, uh, intuition, uh, shift T to select that edit. We are going to ripple edit this one because I, I like the timing on this one. So I'm not going to roll edit. I like the timing. I just, I want to change uh, the entry here. So right when I see that foot come in is when I want to stop. I'm going to hit L to go forward. Right there. Stop. And then the body just barely starts coming in. And that's perfect. So now we can play through that. Let's play through that whole sequence there. Pans up. Door opens. She freaks out. I like the timing on that. And cut. And now something's walking in already. See, and I'd probably add a, maybe a little bit more there when he's coming in. So shift T. Select this, that clip's uh, in point's already selected. Let's hit J, just maybe tell you he just disappears around the corner. J, half second, stop. So about a half second before, and let's give that a try there. Press play, spacebar. I like that. that. That works a lot better there, so. All right, well, that shows the trim windows and the few different types of functions on the trim window. I've been able to access the uh, roll edit, uh, ripple edit, and also being able, able to being able to do both of those functions one frame at a time or being able to use what's called the dynamic trim to play through and kind of play it by, uh, by, by intuition. So, All right, well, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.